you know, we'll talk about thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone comes from the thyroid gland in the neck and it's generally stored in these follicles that are surrounded by follicular cells and the thyroid hormone is held within this thyroglobulin structure. Uh, it's an amine hormone but it's not water soluble so it's carried around the body in the blood by thyroid binding globulin and by trans thyroidin and it's stimulated to be released from the thyroid by thyroid stimulating hormone and that is released from the anterior pituitary. It has a fairly long half-life of about 18 hours and its mechanism of action is to go into cells via an energy dependent process and activate transcription of many genes and it affects growth um, it, but mainly it controls your basal metabolic rate and the more thyroid hormone you have the more energetic your body is and because of this it reinforces the activities of sympathetics because uh, they supply the energy and then thyroid hormone allows you to use it this shows how thyroid uh, This shows you the formation of the different thyroid hormones. They come from tyrosine. Uh, the aromatic group on tyrosine is iodinated to become monoiodotyrosine and 3,5-diodotyrosine. And then these are coupled, so the aromatic ring is added to the hydroxyl group. And you can end up with different types. You have T3, which is the active one, which is 353-triodothyronine, and then T4, which is the inactive form, and this is 3535-tetraiodothyronine. Notice that T3 has one iodine on the first aromatic group, whereas T4 has four iodines bound to both. And then you have this reverse T3, where the second aromatic group only has one iodine on it and this alters their functions. So <clears throat> the three forms, T4 is the precursor form, it's not very active, T3 has much higher activity than T4 and then you have, th these are converted from one to the other at target sites uh, T4 is the predominant one that is released, and then T3 is the active form. And then you have a reverse T3 that has no biological activity, and it's just an inactive form. The control of thyroid hormone release is through the hypothalamus pituitary thyroid gland axis. Thermal and caloric signals will stimulate or inhibit the release of TRH from the hypothalamus. With release of TRH from the hypothalamus, it'll stimulate the pituitary to release TSH. TSH then stimulates the thyroid gland to grow and to release T4 and T3. T4 is the predominant form that is released and it's usually converted to T3 at peripheral tissue, although there is a minor amount of T3 that is released. Both T4 and T3 feed back onto the pituitary and the hypothalamus to inhibit TSH and TRH respectively. And you'll notice that TSH actually doesn't feed back at all in this system. So you have long loop feedback but no short loop feedback. This shows you what happens to cells that are stimulated by thyroid hormone. As we can see at the top of this diagram, T4 is converted into T3, and then T3 activates a thyroid receptor that then starts synthesis of many proteins that increase the activity of the cells. And as a result, you get an increase in cardiac output, in oxygen consumption, because there's more mitochondria, more respiratory enzymes, and this will make you want to take in more food. Then you breathe off more carbon dioxide and you get 
more excretory products produced and this generally ends up with thermogenesis and sweating as a result. One way that the body produces heat through thyroid hormone is with these brown fat cells and the expression of a protein called UCP1 or uncoupling protein 1. And what happens is that the hypothalamus releases T4 into the system via TRH onto the pituitary and then TSH onto the thyroid. <clears throat> Releasing T4, this goes into these effector cells and is converted to T3 and then this synergizes with norepinephrine which stimulates the release of or increase of cyclic AMP through adenyl cyclase and this then causes the transcription of UCP1 which uncouples the electron transport chain from the formation of ATP and so the energy then is just used to create heat rather than creating ATP and so this way then you get a lot of uh, energy released as heat and this enables the body to uh, increase its core heat core temperature through the actions of both thyroid hormone and norepinephrine.